Hello, thank you. Well, it can hit anywhere, can't it? To any of us. That feeling of being overwhelmed, of thinking, can I cope with this? Sometimes life can feel too difficult. But there's one place we can go. Yes, <laughs> the toilet, the loo, the bathroom, whatever you call it, it's a place where we can lock the door, be on our own for maybe just a few minutes. And what we do in that silent space can make a difference when we walk back out of the door and have to face that challenging situation that might be feeling just a little bit too overwhelming. So I'd like you to imagine your own bathroom at home, please, <laughs> or at work, or anywhere where you might frequently feel stressed or anxious. Because as we've already heard today, and in the media and research confirms it, feelings of stress and anxiety within our culture continue to rise. So what can we do? What can any of us do when we don't know what to do? I call it doing toilet seat therapy, and we're going to do it now. <laughs> so first of all, I'm going to use the left wall. And I use this to ask myself, what's threatening me? Now, in my own life as a military wife, I've had a lot of fears and threats over the years that have made me question, can I cope with this? Am I gonna be okay? We've moved repeatedly at least every two years with two small children in tow to different countries around the world, often isolating places, leaving friends and work behind. And with a husband who's been away for months on end, either training or in combat situations. And I've asked myself, am I gonna be okay? Will I have the knock on the door that tells me he's not coming home? Or will he come home physically and emotionally and mentally okay? And if he doesn't, will we be able to cope with that? Are my children gonna be able to cope and make new friends again? And as a relationship counsellor, I work with people who have hugely overwhelming changes and challenges in their lives. Relationship breakdown, bereavement, challenges at work, losing jobs, financial challenges. Questioning in some way, can I meet this change? Can I meet this challenge? Do I have what it takes? And I try to remember that there's nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so, the words of Shakespeare. Because in reality, if you imagine on this left wall, there is nothing there that actually can threaten us unless we allow it to. Because events are neutral, aren't they? It depends what they mean to us. One event could be positive to one person, but negative to the next. So we get to decide for ourselves what we're afraid of, and the emotions that that's allowed to generate. And I try to remember that. I use the rear wall now to think about what are my negative coping strategies? Now again, at my lowest point, I know that I turned to something that I think I'm not alone in this. And I started noticing that I was scrolling through social media and becoming mindlessly looking and using the internet as a sort of a almost self-harming, it turned out, strategy. Because you look at the highlight reels of others, and here today somebody else has said the same thing. Look at how amazing they look on their news feed. But if I know anything as a counsellor, it's that we show the world we're like an iceberg. We might show the world only one-tenth of how we really are and what we really feel and these threats that we're all facing, whereas nine-tenths lie beneath the surface. So at my challenging times, I wasn't using the best strategy. And for my clients, it could be that we try to escape. It's our fight or flight response. So with these threats, we feel threatened. The adrenaline rises, the anxiety comes up, and now we're stressed. We're ready to either fight or flight. So what do we escape into? Some form of addiction, mine with social media, it could be alcohol, drugs, it could be sex, gambling, comfort food. And we know that they might work short term, but they're not really doing as much good long term. Or what I see a lot of 
and again I've experienced myself, we attack those closest to us often. We're thinking, I don't feel okay, all of this feels overwhelming. So we hear ourselves take it out on our children or our partner and we think, who's this person, where's this come from? Or I'll see the couples that come to me take it out on each other when not, what they're really looking for is somebody to say, it's okay. Thinking about the floor now, so I ask myself, do I think of concrete or grass? So in my challenging situation, if I think of concrete, then it's like I'm saying, well, this is it. There's nothing I can do about this. There's nothing I can change. I'm always going to feel like this. I've failed. It's over. I might as well just give up. Or I can think that there's grass beneath my feet. There could be any seeds planted in there. Anything can grow. Anything can change. How can I grow? And at one of my greatest challenges, when my husband was on the front line in Afghanistan with the Black Watch, I thought to myself, is this it for seven months? Am I not feeling okay for seven months? Or how could I grow? So I started to research and write a book called Stay Calm and Content, No Matter What Life Throws At You, for myself and for the clients I was working with. And ultimately, four years later, it's brought me here today. The ceiling now, I love the ceiling. <laughs> so imagine for me, no matter what the weather's like outside, that the ceiling opens up and in pours amazing, warm, bright sunshine. And if you only have a couple of moments when you've shut that door and locked it, whatever that challenge is outside, do this. Let it seep into your head, breathe it in, just say, I'm okay. Let it feel like it's pouring out through your fingers and toes and helping you to feel okay. Because you're asking yourself, is my engine okay? Often like the weather outside, we, which we can't control. We can't control the people around us. Usually we can't control events. We can only control our own self-esteem, our own self-confidence engine. And it matters what it's running on. If it's running on feeling okay, no matter what, then my approach to my challenges can be hopeful. It can be encouraging others. It can, I can think of love and praise and positive energy and be helpful and supportive and approach them like that. Or if my challenges overwhelm me and I switch to not feeling okay and taking it out on others, I can say, it's not my fault I feel like this and I can take it out on my family and my colleagues it's my boss's fault it's the dog's fault it's my children's fault so I'd rather use the sunshine and I try to remember this amazing quote from Eleanor Roosevelt that I use a lot when I work with children that no one can make you feel inferior without your consent the right wall now definitely another of my favourites. So we're using this to think about what are we grateful for? Because our brains are so quick, aren't they? We're sort of always focusing on that, where's the threat coming from? Which we've had to do through our, our evolution as hunter-gatherers. We've had to be worried about physical threats. What if I'm not going to be okay? And our brains are very quick at finding things to fear. And now I think, particularly now in the 24-7 sort of culture, we have far more emotional threats coming in potentially all the time. Why did they say that? How could she do that? How do I feel about myself now that I've seen this and heard that? We forget to look the other way. And for every 10 or everything on here, there can be 10 or 20 things on the other wall or even more that we can be thankful for. So I try to remember that I woke up today. I've drunk clean water today. I've had food to eat today. There are so many things I can learn and experience and see the amazing sea here on beautiful Anglesey. Lots of things to be grateful for. The mirror. Here we go. <laughs> My little friends. <laughs> so, I use the mirror to think about how do I speak to myself in this situation? This is my little gremlin. Well, you look in the mirror and you say, who do you think you are? Well, you're completely rubbish. You're far too weak to do this. You can't make a difference. You're ugly. You're too old. 
you're too young, you're too stupid, there's no point doing this challenge because you, you know you're going to fail and then how are you going to feel? You might as well not try, just other people are better than you, let them do it. Don't, don't bother. I know so many clients and friends and acquaintances that have listened to a voice like this for most of their lives. I mean, how do they feel? Not great. So again, when I work with children, I try and bring out everybody's best friend, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. And often we talk about where that best friend is and they might say to me, well, my best friend wasn't very nice to me today and I don't feel very good. And I try and say, well, good friends are really, really important, but everybody's best friend is right here. And so when we look in that mirror, can we say, you're okay. You were okay the minute you were born. You don't need to be better than anyone else. You know, I'm no better than anyone else, but no one's better than me. That phrase. Give it your best shot. Feel the fear, do it anyway. Just be yourself and give a gift to the world that's truly yours. You've got this, just try. Just show them who you are. I believe in you. You believe in you, come on. So in a similar way, how do I treat others? particularly at those challenging times when I know I could flick into not being okay and thinking I'm going to take it out on them. And again, the saddest part often of my job is that clients will arrive desperately hoping that they're going to find their Winnie the Pooh again. That in the beginning of their relationship, they had compassion, they had understanding, they felt love for each other, they were close and it was wonderful. But somewhere along the line, the threats and the fears have turned them into taking it out on each other but often if they can find that inner self-esteem and that inner voice of I'm okay they can start to say I'm okay you're okay and it can make all the difference of changing them into understanding and compassion and ultimately finding the love again because again I remember this quote when we judge another we don't define them we define ourselves Onto the sink. So, a friend of mine said to me, um, yeah, I like all your approach and it's all very good and everything, but um, I had this incident with a neighbor and he drove me nuts. He accused me of something that I just hadn't done. And I was, she was completely incensed. So she said, but I did think about it and I thought, okay, that's positive. You know, I'm thinking about how he's threatening me and how he thinks I'm threatening him. And I'm thinking about how I could negatively cope with this and what I could do. But I really want to just go and knock on his door and scream at him. But she said to me, I was really proud of myself. I didn't, because I would normally have done that, but I didn't. But she said, what do I do with the frustration and the anger that I didn't do that? And again, one of my clients said the same thing quite recently. What do I do with the sadness? She's been desperately betrayed and, and she's sad. And I thought, well, how does that fit in my toilet seat therapy analogy? And I thought, well, these threats and our fears do come with natural emotions of maybe sadness, frustration, anger. But the thing is, they flow and they can drain away. And the sink means, do we want to put the plug in and let them fill us up and define who we are and define how we think and define what we do and then we go and scream at the neighbour because we're filled with anger or do we keep the plug out, let them come and let them drain away. We've reached the door in our toilet seat therapy and I use this to say, so who do I want to be in this challenging situation? What are my positive coping strategies that are going to help me be who I want to be? Can I choose love, ultimately, over fear? And some of the most resilient people in the research that I was doing for the book use very simple but powerful strategies that most of you here will already know. Going out in the fresh air, exercising in daylight, looking out at a beautiful view, particularly over water, natural water, the sea, rivers, lakes, that's one of my favourites. Being creative, we've heard today, it's really important to keep thinking, keep learning, keep creating. So I've recently come back from another one of my challenging situations and I asked myself, 
what have I missed that hasn't helped me be who I am? And I've gone back to old hobbies of ballet and tap and helping out at the Cubs, local cub troupe. Because again, one of the strategies is helping others. As media, we do that, we actually help ourselves. So I'll leave you with my toilet seat therapy. I hope that's been interesting. And just a last question that I often get, people will say, is there one top tip for happy, healthy relationships? And I often say, well, I do have a favorite quote. So I'll leave you with this. And it's this, don't wait for people to be friendly, show them how. Thank you. <laughs>